troubles that I could have. I can't describe the way I've been feeling Everything all turned around inside my head Longing to find some magical sign A key to my deepest desire A home that my body is left I've waited on the fifties Despite the love leaves to no To find my voice like Zachariah, but it comes out weak and pale. Can we build a place for all the lost too long to be? Held inside the arms of love, the joy that sets us free. from their home, search for a room in a bed. The snow fell against the light of a star. Without any offer or invite, he came to give life to the dead. Can you imagine all the rain of all of the world, yet no one welcomes you? journey and welcome to our Christmas worship. Um, as we know in the church, Christmas is a season, not just a day. So we have 12 whole days of Christmas yet to celebrate. So we hope you'll join us in that celebration. We're delighted that you're here. Um, if you are on Zoom, um, hopefully by now you have muted yourself. Um, Cindy is your greeter for today. We'd love to have you at some point sign in, you know, just put something in the chat so that we know you're here. Same with all of you who are on Facebook. Um, if you're worshiping with us on Facebook today, just find that comment section and sign in right there. Just say hello to your, um, your Facebook greeter today is Wendy. So, um, you know, keep that comment section open, chat amongst yourselves, the same with the chat on Zoom. 
We want to um, offer a special welcome today to our mama church, um, Clinton Heights, uh, across the river. Um, we are glad that you're with us today, and we want to let you know that um, our thoughts and prayers are with you, and particularly with your pastor and with Shell as they mourn the loss of Shell's father. And um, we just send you all the love, and um, we are we're glad that you were able to be with us today. So during the season of Advent, we have been um, using this, uh, this theme um, of close to home from a sanctified art. And we're going to continue to use that for the next couple of weeks through this Christmas season. Um, and so today's theme um, is all about chosen home. And when we left Jesus, you know, on Friday night, um, he was a baby, he was in a manger, um, and everybody was celebrating this miraculous birth. Um, as the saying goes, you know, with kids, all of you who have kids, um, you know that it is, um, they grow up really fast, right? All of a sudden, you know, they go from babies to, you know, kindergarten and then high school and all of that really, really fast. So that's the case for Jesus today. <laughs> um, we left him in a manger, but today um, we're going to look at a story about Jesus when he's 12. And um, it's a little confusing because then next week we'll go back to Jesus when he's two. But in any case, um, we're going to get a little glimpse into his teenage years um, and see um, how he chooses intentionally. He's very intentional about his choices, about where he's going to be and what his life is going to be like. So we're going to take a little uh, look at that story today. Um, we're going to start with our gathering words. I don't think Margot's here, right? All right, I'm going to lead this. Um, so here we go. Your part will be in yellow. Eventually it will show up. Come into this space just as you are. Come into this space speaking your truth. Come into this space with your authentic self. Wherever you are, we are in the presence of God. This is where God lives. Let us worship God author God, scripture tells us that when Jesus taught in the temple, all who heard were amazed. We want to be amazed too. We want to hear your word with new ears. We want to be unraveled and transformed by the truth tucked between those sentences. We want to be opened up by the hope. We want to be amazed. So as we worship today, transport us to those early days in the temple, open our hearts, so we can hear your word like never before. We are listening. We are grateful. Amen. And I invite you to sing.
angels sing, praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth here with us, joy awakening at your feet we Sing praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth here with us, joy awakening at your feet. And our reading for the day um, comes to us from the Gospel of Luke. And um, I think I saw Margot pop in, so uh, take it away, Margot. Now, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. But when the feast was over, as they were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but because they assumed that he was in their group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they began to look for him among their relatives and acquaintances. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard Jesus were astonished at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were overwhelmed. His mother said to him, child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. But he replied, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Yet his parents did not understand the remark he made to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And today, um, in addition to our sacred text, um, I thought we would take a moment um, to add a modern text and a modern painting. Um, those of you who have been with us as we've done um, some of our reflection groups with the different worship series from um, a sanctified art know that included in all of this is some amazing artwork. So um, the artwork is on the screen. Also, if you have your devotional book handy, that may be a better way to look at it um, and to view it. And what we're going to do, um, we've heard of, about Lectio Divina, which invites us to, you know, hear the text and reflect on it. Um, this is Visio Divina. So we are going to um, kind of enter into the painting um, and to reflect on it. So what I want you to do first this morning is just to take, um, take a couple deep breaths if you would, and calm yourself. I know like in the aftermath of the holiday, some of us may still um, bring with us a lot of things into worship. So uh, as much as possible, let go of that, breathing in and then breathing out and just being aware of your breathing for a little while, calming yourself as much as possible. And then if you would look at the picture and notice, notice whatever it is that comes to you first in the piece of art, where it is first that your eye is drawn to, and then perhaps the things that you don't see right away, but may become apparent to you as you kind of study this piece of art. And when and you look at it, what, what feelings does it bring forth in you? 
think for a moment about perhaps where you find yourself in this picture. And then I wanna share with you the reflection from the artist. So continue to study the picture as you hear these words. We don't know why Luke is the only gospel writer to tell us the story of Jesus as an adolescent. Luke offers us short vignettes of Jesus' life after his birth. He's circumcised and dedicated to God. He's blessed by both Simeon and Anna in the temple. And each year, he and his parents return to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. His family follows the law, according to Moses. This Messiah is not an outsider to the tradition. He's born from within it. But he will grow to question, challenge, reform, and revolutionize it. We see Jesus' first challenge to that system in this story when, as a 12-year-old boy, he stays behind without his parents' permission. He dives so deeply into the teaching that he shocks his elders, amazing them with his autonomy, knowledge, and earnestness. His actions threatened the status quo and also created divide between him and his family of origin. To fulfill his ministry, he'll need to leave home, his parents and many of his faith traditions behind. As I created this image, I felt the grief and the tension shared by Jesus and his mother. The distance between them is poignant and heavy. Young Jesus looks over his shoulder at what he must leave behind as he moves forward in the other direction. His mother grieves what she can't fully understand. But she holds all of these things in her heart, keeping them forever. A dividing line made of gold separates them, but this this boundary is also sacred and needed for Jesus to live into the fullness of his fullness of his calling. No matter the boundaries we choose or are forced to put in place, no matter the separations we endure, we must trust that we deserve true belonging. We must seek our chosen homes and families. When necessary, we must question and challenge the traditions we've inherited. Ultimately, we must trust that our true home belongs with God. More lies. More truth is breaking from your world. More light, more truth. Holy Spirit, help us hear what needs to be.
So usually around this time of year, we think of Jesus as a baby, right? He's usually laying in a manger. There might be some sheep or a cow or two. Definitely no crying in the scene at all. Usually Mary and Joseph are looking on and there might be a lingering shepherd and maybe some magi in the scene. When we're not in the midst of Christmas, during Lent and what the church calls ordinary time, we usually think of Jesus as an adult, right? We see him healing, we see him preaching and teaching, we see him doing all sorts of miracles. He's feeding the crowd one minute, he's calming the storm the next minute, and then he's turning water into wine. We see him going from town to town as the spirit leads him. And then during Lent and Holy Week, we see him in his final hours. The scripture in Luke 2 gives us a rare, very rare opportunity to see a 12-year-old Jesus. Teenage Jesus, if you will, almost all grown up Jesus. Now, we don't have many of these kinds of stories in our sacred text. If you ever want to do some interesting reading, however, eh, you know, maybe later today, Google stories about Jesus' childhood, and you'll find some fascinating accounts from some texts that weren't included in our scriptures. And if you really, really, really want to laugh out loud, really funny stuff, um, check out the fictional characterization of Jesus um, and his childhood, particularly in the book entitled Lamb, the Gospel According to Biff, um, Christ's Childhood Pale. Lamb, the Gospel According to Biff. Laugh out loud funny. You'll get some stories about Jesus that you've never even thought of today. But today, in our gospel text, we find the one and only story in our gospels about Jesus' life as a young adult. A young adult. In short, and depending on how you look at it, <laughs> it's kind of a sweet story. Unless right now in your life, you're a parent of a teenager and probably um, the story may kind of hit close to home for some of you right now. If your teenager has ever kind of, you know, gone missing and you're not really sure where they are and they won't answer their text messages. So let's take a deeper look at this. It's a very, very short story, but let's unpack it a little bit and see where it is that it rubs up against our own story. So the scene is set as a road trip. Mary and Joseph and 12-year-old Jesus are on their way to the temple. It's a yearly affair for all of them, which I think we all get, right? When it's not pandemic, a lot of us make road trips during the holidays. Only for Jesus and his family, it's not Christmas. It's Passover. And they are not, not on a trip to see Nana and Papa. They are on their way to the temple to fulfill religious obligations, to make sacrifices, to gather for the Passover meal, to perform the rituals and the traditions, the very rich and deep traditions that are very much a part of their lives. Ever since he was presented to Anna and Simeon in the temple eight days after his birth for circumcision and his naming ceremony, this would have been an annual pilgrimage for him. Only now, now 12-year-old Jesus is getting older. In fact, in Jewish tradition, in many ways, he is now considered a man. And as he grows in size, as the scripture in stature, he also grows in a lot of different other ways. And in this moment, in this story, we see him growing into a fuller understanding of who he is and the work that he will do. According to the story, at the onset, everything goes according to plan. Nothing interesting to report here um, until the visit is almost complete. There's nothing unusual about the story until they leave Jerusalem to return home. 
well, until Mary and Joseph were on their way home. Because we read that after the festival of the Passover, Jesus stayed behind in the temple and sat amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. We get this kind of understanding that Jesus feels right at home among them, so much so that he really pays no attention to going home or even informing his parents about his whereabouts. I mean, maybe some of us can all relate to that, right? You've ever had that occasion where you, you totally get engaged in something so that you lose track of everything around you. You're like in the zone, you're in the flow and time doesn't matter. All of a sudden you look up at the clock and you're like, whoa, where did time go? When you're totally engaged in your purpose and who you want to be and you're totally like focused on all of that, it's easy to look, to lose track of time. So that's where Jesus is, but that's not at all where his parents are. Undoubtedly on their way back to Jerusalem, um, they are counting the minutes now, right? As they search the city, they are aware that time is of the essence. They must find their son. It takes them three days, about 4,320 minutes. And when Mary and Joseph finally, finally track him down, this is what Luke reports happens. When his parents saw him, they were overwhelmed. His mother said to him, child, why have you treated us like this? Look at your father and I, we've been looking for you anxiously. Okay, so I'm not a biological parent. But I've supervised enough children and youth to know that that is probably not a direct quote about what Jesus' parents actually said to him. I think this is perhaps where we can sit back and maybe just observe some family dynamics for a moment. If you're a parent, you know what this moment is like, right? Most of you have misplaced your children for a moment or two. And you know that in that moment, you kind of have the sigh of relief. Whew, you found them. You want to hug them and love them and tell them how much you miss them, but you also want to kill them. Now, if you're more in touch this morning with your inner teenager, <laughs> You may totally identify with Jesus at this moment. Maybe you remember a time when your parents just seemed to totally overreact when they found you. A time when you weren't particularly feeling lost. I mean, after all, you knew where you were the whole time, right? Luke reports Jesus' response. Somewhat surprised and probably feeling like he was exactly where he was supposed to be, Jesus says, did you not know that I'd be in my father's house? It almost seems as if young Jesus is annoyed at being found. He's kind of not real happy with being taken away from a place that he has claimed as his own, the place where he feels like he belongs. So the people who put together our theme close to home over at a sanctified art invite us to see this scenario, this text, the story through the eyes and the lens of chosen home. Now, some of us may be familiar with the phrase or one like it, chosen family. Chosen home or chosen family refers to a, a home or a family that one chooses to be part of, not necessarily the home or the family they were born into. I know I know from my experience of working on campus that that is a reality for some of our students. 
as a result, perhaps, of their sexual orientation, their political persuasion, or some other thing, they are no longer welcome in their childhood homes or in their biological families anymore. It's a heartbreaking, scary, frustrating reality. It's traumatic. And in order to heal and to move on, these students choose new homes and new family. A chosen home, a chosen family. Not based on biological ties, but based on love, deep love and compassion and commitment that goes much deeper than biological ties. So here's what I want us to do today. As we stand at the crossroads of what will soon become another year, I want to use, want you to use that idea of chosen home as a challenge for all of us as we think about turning the page to 2022. In her artist statement for chosen home, Reverend Liesl Gwen Garrity writes this. You heard it before. Jesus dives so deeply into the teachings that he shocks his elders, amazing them with his autonomy, knowledge, and earnestness. His actions threaten the status quo and also create a divide between him and his family of origin. To fulfill his ministry, he'll need to leave his home, his parents, and many of his faith traditions behind. As we move into a new year, we're faced with a lot of different choices ahead of us. And I'm not suggesting for a moment that you need to leave your biological family behind unless you know that's what needs to be done. But I want you to think of the other ways that you might have to um, leave things behind in order to fulfill the calling that God has placed on your life. Or in the sense of community, what as a church, as a faith community, will we leave behind in order to more fully embrace our authentic selves, the people that God has made us to be? As we look to 2022, what will you choose? What places will you go? What teachers will you sit with? What will you do to learn? How will you more fully embrace your call and your purpose as a, a person of faith? The author goes on to write these words. Luke offers short, short vignettes of Jesus' life after his birth. He's circumcised and he's dedicated to God. He's blessed by both Simeon and Anna in the temple. And each year he and his parents return to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. His family follows the law, according to Moses. This Messiah is not an outsider to the tradition. He's born from within it but he will grow. He will grow to question, challenge, reform, and revolutionize it. As a 12-year-old boy, Jesus is already beginning to make choices about his life. And as he grows even more, as he begins his ministry, he will continue to choose. He will make a choice, an intentional choice to associate with people who are outsiders, the poor, women, the people who are fragile, the people who are hurting, the people who are in pain. He will make an intentional choice to bring hope and to healing into their lives. He will make an intentional choice to attack the empire to critique the empire in which he finds himself. He will make an intentional choice to lift people up and to place those who are disenfranchised in places of power in his life. 
to welcome the outcast, to feed the hungry, to offer hope. So what is it, Journey and Clinton Heights, that we will do in 2022? What will you choose? I'm reminded um, last week as I did the new members class, as we're gonna get ready to welcome some new members in, um, of all the core values that set us apart as a congregation. And I think it might be a, a good way for all of us to kind of reflect again on, on what choices we will make as we enter into this new year. And pull them up on the website if you want. Um, and they are there, things like engaging worship. So will you choose to be in worship? We value lifelong learning. Will you choose to commit to being part of a class or an educational process? We choose to speak truth to power. So will you choose to be part of our social justice ministry, maybe even a social justice forum? We choose to have authentic relationships. We choose to reach out and truly love your brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ. All of those values are things that we choose to be important. The choices we then make as we follow Jesus' example as a 12-year-old boy will lead us to more a full fulfillment of what God wants us to be. So we're going to close this. We're going to um, ask Holly to share a poetry prayer, also from Sanctified Art. Um, and then after that, where we normally receive our offering, um, Dan has recorded a song that I'm going to play. And within that song, there's some instrumental time. Um, so, and I'm going to challenge you to use that as time. Maybe you want to even literally grab a piece of paper and to reflect on the choices that you want to make as you begin um, to um, transition from 2021 into 2022. So Holly, first of all, take it away and read our poem for us today, Chosen chosen home. We choose to make it work. We hang a wreath on the door of our shoebox apartment. We invite company over. We ask, would you like coffee with that? We choose to make the most of it. We take up water coloring or kickboxing and show up to class. We mostly embarrass ourselves, but we were there. We choose to not go it alone. We sign up to volunteer and make ourselves a name tag. We slide weary bones into weary church pews. We shake hands and say hello. We let the music cover us like a blanket or a prayer. We choose to love what we have. We look in the mirror and speak kindly to our body. We buy flowers at the market and arrange them in jelly jars. There are a million ways to choose a home. So like Jesus in the temple who chose to stay, we chose to, who chose to speak, who took up space because he knew he was home. I invite you to do the same. Put your body where your soul feels alive. Give yourself permission to take up space there. Stay as long as it takes. Return as often as you need. There are a million ways to choose a home. Choose wisely. We need you here. Amen. So continue to reflect on those words. And I invite you also then to reflect on the song. Um, the title of the song is Make of My Heart a Stable. Um, it's Dan Sampson's recording. And then, like I said, during those um, instrumental parts, maybe you want to even jot down some notes to yourself. Some I don't want to call them New Year's resolutions because it's more than that. It's more how you will choose a home, how you will be intentional about your choices as we move forward. Make 
all of you now to join me in our prayer of dedication. Gracious God, your story is one that forever invites us to be our full selves, to take up space, to go where we feel called, and to allow this community to feel like home. So use our gifts to keep building your home here with gratitude as tall as the ceiling, we pray. Amen. So we have an opportunity now to share our joys and our concerns. Um, if you are on Zoom, we invite you to put your prayer concerns in the chat feature, um, and we will send those out later via an e-prayer. The same for those of you who are on Facebook, you can put that in the comment section. If you feel more comfortable, you can always um, call or text us with your prayer concerns or email them as well, and we'll compile them um, and get them out for the entire community to share. So we begin um, that by uh, lighting our care candles. And we first light this candle for all of those who have lost loved ones and feel the waves of grief. We light this candle for those who are sick and who might be recovering from any physical ailment. 
We light this candle for those who live with any form of mental health challenges, whether that be depression or anxiety, PTSD, Alzheimer's, addiction, or substance abuse. We light this candle for those who are feeling very alone and isolated, who may even be afraid, particularly during this time of pandemic. We light this candle for those who are struggling for the basic necessities of life and those who find themselves enslaved by the injustices of our world. We light this candle for those who are treated unfairly simply because of the color of their skin. And we light this candle for those around the world who feel the ripple effects of climate change and the natural catastrophes that they bring. Fires and hurricanes, storms, drought, and more. And I invite you now to um, join me in a spirit of prayer. Holy God, we come to you today in many ways full to the brim. We are carrying gratitude and hope, sometimes dreams and fears, maybe scars and love. And in this moment of prayer, we wanna give that all to you. So as we remember Jesus in the temple who felt at home there, we give you thanks for the places in our lives that have felt like home for us. We thank you, God, for summer camps and family vacations, for crowded tables, porch swings. Thank you for churches that become as familiar as a grandparent's house, house and for friends' homes that have become sanctuary for us. As we remember Jesus in the temple who took up space to be himself, we give you thanks for the places in our lives where we have been able to follow his lead. Thank you, God, for jobs that bring joy and for hobbies that keep passions awake. Thank you for the people who have encouraged our gifts, for those who have spoken out our call out loud. We have so much to be thankful for, and yet we know that there are still, still needs here. So as we lift up our gratitude to you for places that feel like home, and for calls that change our lives, we also remember those who have no home. Draw near to your children who have been forced to choose a new home because they were not welcome in their own home. Surround their grief and their pain with your love and give us the eyes to see, and the arms to welcome them in here. And when fear draws close, pressuring us to play it small and to play it safe. Give us courage, oh God, to be who you call us to be. Help us not only to hear your call on our lives, but to live it, even if it surprises the ones who know us best. Remind us that there is nothing wrong with taking up space, for you gave us that space in the first place. God, there is so much good here. And there is so much we have yet to learn. Help us to be people that create chosen homes. Help us to be people that welcome others into those safe spaces. Help us to be people who follow, follow our calls boldly and bravely, holding open the door for others to follow suit. We come to you today full fall to the brim. Oh God, with prayers that are close to home, and we ask that you would hold them closely. Amen. So we have some announcements for you. Um, first of all, next week, Sunday, um, we will be having worship on Epiphany celebration. Um, Robin Delbaum will be your guest preacher. And um, we do not know yet whether that will be online or in person. We're gonna kind of just um, 
look at the statistics um, this week and see, um, I heard this morning on the news that the rates of infection have actually dropped a little bit, but that might be just because a lot of the testing centers were closed for the holiday. And so it may go back up again. We will let you know. So pay attention to your email um, and um, just to see if we'll be online or if we'll be in person next week. And then January 9, um, we will be celebrating the baptism of Jesus and our newest pastor, John Mabry, will be preaching for us that Sunday. Um, you'll notice there's a couple of weeks in there that um, next week I leave on, on next week, Sunday, a week from Sunday, a uh, week from today, um, I will leave with my students for our annual mission trip. Um, I'll be back January 9, but no, well, I'm not going to have a sermon ready. So that is also the day of our congregational meeting that will be immediately after worship on Sunday, January 9. And that's a day of celebration too, because we will be taking in our new members and receiving them um, as part of our, our church family. Family. And uh, we just want to let you know that during the month of January, our collection of the month is sheets and blankets, twin size sheets and blankets for the emergency shelter that's located at First Lutheran Church. The shelter um, operates during the coldest months of the year, so November through April, and it's supported entirely through private do donations uh, because they um, take anybody in. Um, they don't receive any county funds or state funds. And so they need our help with um, um, some new new supplies to make that happen. So if you have twin sheets or blankets, new is best, but if you have some that are gently used, um, we will also donate um, those. So you have all the Sundays in January to bring those into worship. A reminder that as we start the new year, lots of open spaces for you to be a greeter or a worship assistant. Um, hit that link tomorrow when you get the email and sign up and uh, give us a helpful hand. We, we certainly appreciate that. Looking um, forward then to some other things that are happening in January. January 15, mark the day. Um, we will be having hot cocoa and game night over at Dave and Cindy's home. There is a sign up genius for that. So click that link so you can let them know that you're coming. Everybody's welcome, all ages. We hope you'll join us. It's um, gonna be just kind of a laid back evening of fun and fellowship. And then January 16 to 21 is our week to volunteer for Family Promise. Family Promise is a program that keeps homeless families together as opposed to separating them and sending dad to one shelter and mom and kids to another shelter. Um, and so that's our week to provide meals. A huge thank you to all of you who have signed up. All of the slots are filled and we are um, certainly um, grateful for all of that. Um, and so as we look into the new year, if you have a plan, you know, for an idea that you want to do either in person or online, um, we can go back to some of those Zoom events, particularly, you know, as the infection rates are high, if somebody wants to do a cooking class or a game night, let us know and we will help you make that a reality. Those um, places that we can join together, those spaces that are safe for us. So I invite you now to join me in our blessing and our sending your parts in yellow. As you leave this service, your service begins. Let us comfort the homesick. Let us open our doors to others. Let us seek sanctuary. Let us be brave enough to go home by another way. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcomed. So come back soon. In the name of our foundation, God, spirit, and son, go in peace. And our closing song today is the first Noel, so sing along. Mm -hmm.